Eco Solutions in association with Suzlon. Suzlon, powering a greener tomorrow. Australia, a land of extremes, from lush, fertile coasts to the hard red deserts of the interior. A country that's developed diverse and unique ecosystems to cope with an unforgiving landscape. Much of this country's animal and plant life are in a constant struggle for survival, facing a lack of water and the spread of humans. And now there's a new threat, climate change. Statistics show that Australia is one of the world's worst emitters of greenhouse gases, man-made emissions that are widely believed to be responsible for global warming. So what is it doing and what can it do? This week we'll look at a system being developed to capture and hold greenhouse gases to stop them going into the atmosphere. We'll see how the environmental debate is focusing on one of the country's familiar national symbols. And we'll look at one effort to put millions of hectares of the country's terrain into private hands to create a safe haven for plants and animals. The scientists now mostly agree. In fact, just about everybody agrees. Climate change is here, it's happening now. But it's not just the low-lying countries vulnerable to rising sea levels that are on the front line here. It's other countries, countries like Australia, which are facing their own potential environmental crises. Hello, I'm Andrew Stevens. Welcome to Eco Solutions, and this month we're in Australia. Australia is one of 17 countries in the world that is mega diverse. That means it's got an extraordinary range of ecosystems of native plants and animals. But climate change poses a potentially huge threat to that. Some experts in Australia are now warning that there could be a marked escalation in the extinction rate because of climate change. And that's where places like this come in. This sort of area could provide a key to the survival of many of those species. There has been great change. Uh, everyone can see it in the landscape now. The landscape's dried out, it's lost vegetation, the creeks are drying up, you know, the signs are all there. The signs may confirm or disprove, but as land managers, we are facing this now. Owen Whittaker says he faces the reality of climate change virtually every day. He manages Scottsdale Reserve, just outside Australia's capital city, Canberra. The property is owned by the land conservation group Bush Heritage, which is trying to restore Australia's threatened ecosystems. In effect, trying to restore biodiversity. It's an amazingly rich biodiverse landscape, but if you treat it wrong, it'll chuck you out. And it has done. And I think we've got to take really, really strong note of that in how we manage, how we live in the country, how we manage water, the land, the fertility. Because if we don't, we're going to become irrelevant, just as other species have become irrelevant in this country. The non-profit Bush Heritage was set up almost two decades ago. It's aim to control about 1% of Australia's land mass. That's about 7 million hectares or 17 million acres to provide a safe haven for native animals and plants. Much of Australia is now a disjointed patchwork of farmland, urban centres and bushland, resulting in what's known as habitat islands where animals are effectively trapped on small patches of natural bushland surrounded by cleared or developed land. Bush Heritage plans to develop so-called corridors which would let native species move freely between different types of ecosystems. Scottsdale is a key part of this jigsaw puzzle. Bush Heritage calls it an anchor property. Now, the plan is to create a sort of a, a corridor which begins in these mountains behind me. This is the Kosciuszko National Park and it comes down some 80 kilometres eastwards past Scottsdale through this farmland in front of us right down to the coast. Now what it does is allow animals to migrate, to move, if temperatures start to rise. These corridors will stretch across key areas known for their biodiversity in the east and west of the continent. Some scientists say the Bush Heritage Program could help cushion the impact of climate change because animals will be able to move to higher, cooler habitats in the corridor. In this network of protected areas, there will be 
lots of different types of habitat, lots of different types of ecosystem. That's lots of opportunity for different species and they will all be protected and so that's a fantastic thing. That's really, really good for biodiversity to have lots of different habitats protected and have them near, nearby to each other. The first task after Bush Heritage buys an old farming property like Scottsdale is restoring the native plants. We've got a very dense smothering crop of grass that, that it, unless we sort of try and bump it off its dominance perch if you like, it's just going to restrict biodiversity. This is African love grass. Whittaker is running several experiments on how to kill it off and replace it with native grass. As the habitat is restored, the theory is that the animals will follow. Some species are doing really well. You know, like the kangaroos just on the next hill here, they're, they're, they're really going well. Other species have, have already dropped out and are gone, some are, are on the way out. Many native Australian animals are rarely seen at all because they're nocturnal. You have to be patient. Often, it's just a glimpse. But it's worth the wait. Oh, here's a little brush tail. Um, oh, wow. yeah. these, these lovely little animals used to be very common, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and now we're down to very low populations. Australia's rugged terrain is home to many species that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. So when they disappear from here, it's a loss for the entire planet. It's estimated that in the past 200 years, Australia has lost 27 types of mammals. That accounts for almost half the worldwide figure. Unless we, we, we have a functioning landscape, what hope have we got, you know? Well, I have five grandchildren now, and you know, once you get to that, horizon viewpoint, you start thinking about what the world's going to be like in another 50 years or uh, a century. And, and we have got to start managing the landscape for that, not for us, not for now, but for what it's going to be like in the future. And that future for people like Owen Whittaker and Bush Heritage starts now.